Hi everyone, it's Ryan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make some cut out sugar cookie dough. So for this recipe, it does not need any kind of fancy ingredients. Butter, sugar, flour, vanilla, salt, and eggs is about it. All right, so first in the stand mixer, I'm just gonna put one and a quarter cup of butter. And then to that, we're going to add the sugar. And I'm gonna have the recipe for this in the description box, along with some more links again, like I did last time, just with things that make some of this a little bit easier. Half a stick for that. Let's see if I can put it in there without dropping it on the counter. All right. And then I need one cup of sugar. And this is a half cup measure, so two of those. All right, so I have the butter and sugar in the mixer. I'm using unsalted butter. We are gonna add some salt later on. So I have my attachment with the silicone um, sides to help with scraping the bowl again. I'm just gonna put this on, start out low, and then you want to cream it together until it is all incorporated. So I am gonna scrape some of this that has come up higher on the bowl, back down in. So now I'm just gonna put this back on and let it mix a little bit more. Okay, to this, I'm gonna be adding half a tablespoon of vanilla. and then one egg. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add the one egg. Start this low so you don't throw egg and vanilla all over. I'm gonna pulse it a couple times. Okay, that is mixed in and I'm just going to scrape everything back down into the bowl. And then I'm gonna start adding the flour and salt. All right, so I'm gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of salt. And then I need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Move everything out of the way here. So my flour's right next to it. And again, this is a half a cup measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one and a half cups. And I'm gonna start this on low again, pulsing it a little bit so it doesn't throw flour everywhere, which it's going to. <laughs> Okay, as you could see, like I said, I do not have a low speed on this mixer, so it threw flour everywhere. So I'm gonna add my remaining cup of flour and get that mixed in. And this dough, you don't want to mix too long. I'm going to mix it just until it's incorporated. So that is perfect. All right. So the dough came together nicely. And it needs to be chilled before it is rolled out. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it in saran wrap. I'm just going to pour it on there. Use my spatula to flatten it out a little bit so that it will chill a little bit faster. This looks a little crumbly, it is okay. Just use your hands to put it back 
together. And then I'm just gonna wrap this, put this in the fridge for about 15 minutes to chill. And I'm gonna turn, well, my oven is already on 325 to preheat. And I'll be right back. All right, so I've pulled our cookie dough out of the fridge. You can keep this in your fridge for a little over a week, maybe like a week and a half. If you're gonna keep it any longer than that, I would throw it in the freezer and then bring it out to thaw, maybe like the day before you're gonna roll it out. So your cutout cookies as well, once you've got them baked, you can keep them for about a week as well before you need to store them in the freezer. I like to go ahead and just keep some in the freezer for random things that I might need them for or just because I want a sugar cookie. <laughs> so some other things that I have here, obviously a rolling pin is necessary. Um, I usually like to use this one with no handles. I need to get a new one. I have one linked that has better um, guides for thickness. Um, this one is a 3 8 inch and it does not fit on this rolling pin. So I'm gonna get a new one of those. I also have my baking sheets and Cody, the guy behind the camera last time pointed out how dirty these are and if we needed to get some new ones. And they're really good baking sheets. I actually got these at Sam's Club a long time ago. And I have some silicone baking mats in them. I have some of those linked as well. Um, I have just our cookie cutters. We're gonna do some hearts today because it's almost Valentine's Day. And then our friend's baby's first birthday is coming up and it is strawberry themed. So I'm gonna do some strawberries. And if you wanna zoom in on this, um, I actually just like hand drew a little strawberry shape and then traced it on another piece of paper and cut it out. And I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to hand cut these. You don't have to have a cookie cutter for every single shape that you wanna cut out. You can print something off of your computer, cut it out and use that to hand cut your cookies. And I forgot to mention that I have this um, pastry mat here. It's just gonna make it to where, since I'm using the knife, um, I don't really wanna do that directly on our countertops. So I have this little mat and I do have one of those linked as well. So I'm not gonna roll out this entire um, thing of cookie dough right now. I'm just going to use my bench knife and cut a little bit of it off. Got some flour here. You can have a shaker ready if you want to. I just take a little bit and sprinkle it on your work surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and knead this just a little bit because it is pretty stiff and you want to get it to a workable consistency. So you're not breaking your hands with your rolling pin. And don't worry, this isn't adding too much flour to the mixture, it is okay. And you want your dough to be chilled still because you don't want your cookies to spread too much in the oven. So I'm just gonna get it sort of into a circular shape for no reason other than that's just what I do. Sprinkle a little more flour on your work surface and then a little more on top. This is very basic, I know. But you're gonna use, these guides help you get the correct thickness all the way around your cookie or your dough. So once it seems to stop spreading, you know you're at the right thickness. Not gonna take long for these because it's just a small amount of dough. Since I do have a smaller rolling pin, I'm just gonna have to make sure that I don't run over the sides with the guides. Okay, that is perfect and super simple. Obviously just cut, place on your baking sheet once you get a few cut. And then I'm just gonna show you how I do like this little strawberry one. Just going to trace. You wanna have a sharp blade on your X-Acto because you don't want it to drag the dough. And I used to do this at the shop all the time because people like to order last minute as well. And this is just much easier than trying to run around town looking for the exact cookie cutter that you need. So I'm just going all the way around the edge, 
tracing it. And there we go. We got a strawberry. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut some more of these. I don't wanna bore you with all of that. But I was going to say, because we have two different sizes here, these will bake a lot quicker than the larger ones. These two are about the same size, so I can put those on the same cookie sheet. You wanna leave enough distance, these should not spread, but you wanna leave enough distance so that if they do spread just a tiny bit, that they don't touch each other. And these are actually going to go on the sheet tray back in the refrigerator for about five minutes. That will also help your dough not spread too much in the oven again. All right, so I got some more cut and couldn't cut any more with this dough. So this leftover dough, you can definitely use again. I would go ahead and put it in the fridge so that it can chill again. Otherwise it'll spread too much. And yeah, I just like to put it back in the fridge. Okay, so these have been in the fridge for five minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the oven. It is preheated to 325 and these are gonna go in. These are the smaller ones, so they're probably gonna go in for about five minutes. I'm gonna turn the whole pan and rotate it and then I'm gonna put it in for another five. You wanna wait until the outside is the tiniest bit browned and then pull them out. You don't want them to get overdone. All right, so these just came out of the oven. As you can see, they don't have too much color on them. The outside edges could have gotten a little bit darker maybe, but these took about 12 minutes, which is a little bit longer than I thought they would take. So the larger ones are still in the oven and I'm gonna get these put onto a cooling rack so they aren't on this hot pan anymore and I'm gonna roll out some more. And here are the larger ones. They took about 15 minutes total. Again, they don't have too much color. The strawberry, the tips of the strawberry were starting to get a little bit um, dark. So you do wanna be careful if you have anything that's like smaller, it will bake a lot faster. So I'm gonna continue to roll. All right, so I have most of the cookies out of the oven. They are ready to decorate because these are cooled. You wanna make sure that all of your cookies are cooled before you decorate them. You can either use royal icing, a glaze, buttercream, whatever kind of icing that you want. I'm gonna make some royal icing, but I'm gonna do that in a different video. So come back and check out that video, and then I'm gonna also decorate these in two different videos. I'm gonna do the hearts and then also the strawberries. So come back and check out the channel.